Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody and um, introduce our group. I'm Erica and Evelyn, Hunter, Lily, Cynthia, Angeli, and Kayla will also be um, presenting their slides as well on our audit tool for the poultry industry. The poultry industry produces birds for the consumption of their meat or eggs for food. There are a lot of different bird breeds in the poultry industry, but the main ones in, in the production include chickens, turkeys, ducks, and more, but chickens are the biggest one. So in the chicken overview, there's hatched and housed together, some sex separated. There are three major aspects, which would be broiler, which are used for meat consumption, layers, for eggs and breeders, eggs and hatchery. The major industry products are the broil industry, turkey industry, and layer industry. And the US accounts for about 1.2 trillion in the total economic output, and Canada accounts for about 8 billion. Poultry is an intensive production system where they are kept indoors constantly. Broilers are chickens who are bred for meat that are kept in buildings called houses. They are brought in as day old chickens, grow to eight weeks old and weigh about five to 10 pounds. They are all gathered up to be transported after reaching the correct size. Chickens called layers are raised for eggs and are kept in brooders as chicks and eventually moved up to cages or pens once they are over six weeks old. Hens are then kept for their egg production for two to three years. Audit industry basics. I will be talking about the two companies we use creating the tools. Um, the first being farm animal care training and auditing. Their goal is to fulfill expectations of animal welfare in multiple stages of broiler production that is comprised of seven different sections. The other being American Humane Certified which serves multiple different industries of animal welfare auditing that provides high quality training and certification credentials for both auditors and audits. Some of the tools are providing hens with adequate nest space, which benefit the broiler health, comfort, and ability to produce at the best of their ability, and the euthanasia protocol, um, ensuring that the coal and mortality are removed from the general population and reported on a daily basis by the workers. Poultry production systems can be classified in three categories. Starting off with the organic production system. Organic means it is free from the use of pesticides, such as pest control, which is usually used to manage the development of flies and other bugs. It is also free from antibiotics, inorganic fertilizers, and other national standards. Only free-range hens can be used to produce certified organic eggs and chicken meat. A natural diet with certified organic ingredients is a requirement in the organic production system. The natural diet consists of essential vitamins and minerals. This production system also requires a safe shelter for security and protection from unwanted elements. Next, we have conventional production system. Conventional means it is the use of antibiotics and dietary supplements for commercial birds to achieve market weight. 99% of the poultry production in the US use this system. This production system relies on chemical fertilizers for the use of plant growth. Chemical control is also used, such as pest control, to control weeds and unwanted pests. Birds are raised in environmentally controlled houses. They feed off dietary supplements and antimicrobials, which prevent disease and help growth. And lastly, we have free range production system. Free range means it allows the freedom for poultry to express natural behavioral instincts. It is the commercial production of eggs or chicken meat. No more than 10,000 birds can be outdoors. Birds have access to roam free during daylight and are secured at night from weather 
or predators. Antibiotic treatment can be used on sick birds. That means they will no longer be sold as free range. Beak trimming is also acceptable if accredited by a personnel and initiated under a veterinarian. The free range production system can be certified by the FREPA, meaning the Free Range Egg and Poultry Australia. I will be talking about consumer targets and price points. So the target consumer is people who will consume poultry products and for re restaurants or markets that will sell a product that usually contains poultry or eggs. So for price points of chicken breast, you can usually see conventional for around $3.79 per pound. And then it'll double whenever you go to free range, which will be $6.79 per pound. And then for organic, it does raise up more to $8.99 per pound. And those are all prices from Whole Foods. And then for eggs, the conventional price is usually around anywhere from 97 cents to $3. For free range, it's around $2.32 to $4.03. And then organic will be around like $4 to $8. And then those prices should also be from Whole Foods. From this slide, I will be continuing on consumer targets. For retailers such as Whole Foods, they sell free range and organic eggs and meat. Retailers such as Winco, however, sell conventional eggs and meat. There's a scoring protocol for broiler chicken. Each one gets an audit um, with processing, transportation, hatchery will have its own score. Each audit item, the producer will get its highest number of points saved if the standards are met. And if they are not met, they get no points. There's no partial credit rewarded. If it's considered to be not suitable for the poultry, it's removed from the total available points in calculating its audit score. If it's qualified for certification, they must pass each and every one of the mandatory pass fail audit item and receive a minimum of 85% on the audit score for each audit in order to pass. So there are four steps for the scoring protocol on the American Humane for, on broiler chicken. Step one includes counting all the total points possible for every item on a scored animal welfare standard. And then step two, you would count the number of total not a pleasable audit items, then deduct the not a pleasable total points possible for all the items. This just helps adjust points achievable. Step three, you calculate all the total points achieved in the audit. And step four, you divide the total points achieved by the adjusted total points achievable to find the overall audit percentage. So the scoring protocol for the FACTA, which is the Animal Welfare Assurance Certification and Training for broilers, um, major non-conformances have an outcome of an instant fail of that audit section. The rest of the audit will still be completed in its entirety, but a corrective action and re-audit on the particular section where the major non-conformances occurred will be required. Back to Humane Certified, each, sec each section must receive a minimum of 79% and pass all major non-conformances in the seven sections. So the section one includes the hatchery welfare audit. Section two includes pullet animal welfare policies and observation audits. Section three, breeder animal welfare policies and observation audit. Section four, broiler animal welfare policies and observation audit. Section five, catching and transportation welfare audit. Section six, plant and processing welfare audit. And section seven, corporate review and responsibility audit. So continuing 
doing with the scoring protocol for the fact of broiler. Um, auditor gives points for all the standards in compliance except for questions labeled as major non-conformances. Those are scored on a pass or fail only. So question numbers followed by an indicates question that are related to product production and may possibly lead to any animal welfare issues if not handled correctly. Each breeder, broiler, and pullet house provides as a as an individual audit. Section two through four will be completed for each house audited. If there is no pullet or breeder operation, then these sections will be labeled as not a pleasable in a for short. A total of two broiler houses near the end of production will be selected for paw and gate scoring observations. All houses with birds that are more than seven days from slaughter, gate and paw scoring questions will be labeled not a feasible and points will be deducted from all the total points that are available in section four. Each pullet and breeder house audited will be observed for gate scores. One or more fail results in the entire company not receiving FACTA humane certification until correct actions have been documented and re-audit of the house or houses has been con conducted. Audit, audit tool comparison. These slides will be talking about the comparison between the two different companies management aspects covered in each of their tools. Audit tools are based on the animal welfare of broilers and breeders in our presentation. Stocking density, weight requirements, vaccine records, and adequate nesting space are some of the many audit tools that are similar in each of the companies and organizations we used. Requirements in the audit tools are graded by the same system, which is a numeric system. Some of the different tools in each are providing hens with an adequate nest space. This allows space density protocol for breeder facilities on both ends. In each, auditors observe birds' behavior and mobility on site, while also evaluating the space adequacy based on the same observations. The overstocked houses where birds aren't able to access water feeders or cannot move freely in general will receive a zero on this tool. Another tool is making sure the breeder house is stocked so birds are able to move freely around the house. The breeder house must have nest boxes. The style and design of the boxes can vary between the two different systems. The number of hens per nest must follow the manufacturer's recommendation. The auditor must be able to verify the number of hens per nest criteria during their audit. A written program must be observed for this tool, and that goes for both as well. Management aspects are on a pass slash fail grading system. This section is the only one that is not graded numerically. Corporate review and responsibility audit is highly valued and needs to be on a very strict and well design system to ensure that all management workings are followed. To complete, to complete the audit tool comparison between the two companies, I'd like to mention a few more tools. The first being lameness. There is a quantitative gate analysis that offers objective information to support clinical decision making during lameness audit. The gate scores are assessed in each breeder house audited, and their score is between zero and two. Injuries where the bird is harmed, damaged, or impaired, not related to a disease outbreak, are documented. Partial points are awarded and will need to be addressed by management. Euthanasia. The company must have a written protocol that includes all euthanasia methods utilized on site and that follow the AVMA's guidelines for euthanasia of poultry. All of this information must be available on their website. The coal and mortality must be removed from the general population and reported on a daily basis. The auditors must determine if all coals or mortalities are documented. 
by the workers. Restraint and handling. Numerical grading ranges from a scale of 5 to 20, with a few tools labeled as a major non-conformance if it occurs. Management must make sure all employees that are responsible for welfare and care or handling must be trained previously to beginning the job. Environment. Written biosecurity plan that includes visitor policies, mortality disposal, and rodent management must be listed. Reducing or preventing rodents from gaining access includes maintaining bait boxes, managing vegetation around the perimeter of the house, immediate removal of feed spills and other practices to restrict flies or other rodents from contaminating the poultry. Physical alteration. Routine checks to ensure no harm is being done to the birds, no irritation or physical alteration was performed, whether that is beak trimming or ID tags. Management must ensure workers are trained to look for discomfort in birds to ensure that it does not happen and continue. There, there are some audit failure scenarios and corrective actions for the re-audit comparison. Any presence of major nonconformance will result in immediate failure of that specific audit section. The rest of the audit is completed, but a corrective action has to be taken and a re-audit on that section where the major nonconformance occurred is required. Willful acts of animal abuse or neglect will result in another immediate failure of the audit. If it is safe, the auditor should intervene and stop the behavior and report the incident to the representative on site. Forms of abuse or neglect include hitting, kicking, or other malicious intent to cause harm to an animal. Picking up a bird by one wing, the head, or a neck at any time are other examples of abuse and neglect. The same protocol for audit being conducted fully followed by corrective action and re-audit will occur. To continue, to continue with more fail scenarios and corrective actions for re-audit, Another aspect is that an audit section receiving less than a score of 80% requires a re-audit of that section after a corrective action is made, submitted, and approved by the company. Once the corrective action is approved, the re-audit will take place for that specific section within 30 days. Corrective actions and re-audits are mandatory for all failures of a section. Corrective action must be submitted within seven days of the failure of an audit. Minimally, details of which type of failure occurred, why it occurred, and what steps the company has or will take to address the situation that led to the major nonconformance or at least above must be included. So for automatic fails and non-conformance for each tool, for the American Humane, an automatic fail will be any welfare issue that has points lost on it. You do need 100% in each audit area to be able to have it passing. If not, then you do have to come up with a corrective plan to deal with it. For FACTA, their major non-conformance is an automatic fail for the audit sections. So a good example would be animal abuse, which would be automatic fail. So different from American Humane, you need less than 80% instead for it to be considered an automatic fail. So examples of automatic fails or non-conformance for both of these, aggressive handling would count, live chicks found in hatchery waste areas, burlers in contact with painted wood, which are toxic, lack of enrichment, and stocking, de stocking density not exceeding guidelines. The, the use of audit tools from both companies be used. There are instructions provided for grading and scoring on both the internal and external audits. The internal audit for FACTA is different from American Humane in terms of scoring and sections of broiler processing and handling. FACTA has distinguished sections that provide verification examples for the certain aspects. 
American Humane is readily easy to score within the facilities. The auditors should be trained in learning terminology and welfare issues within the industry to determine scoring. Both audits provide feedback and guidelines for the facilities, as well as they have very, very similar grading systems. The, U the U.S. gate scoring system. The gate scoring is a method used for assessing a large number of birds. This method records the number of birds unable to walk or move, which has a score of two. Hens and roosters may need to be gently encouraged while scoring. Birds that become stressed or hot have to discontinue scoring immediately. The scores range from zero to two. Score zero being birds walks at least five feet and no visible signs of lameness. Score one being birds can walk at least five feet but has uneven steps. And score two being birds will not walk five feet and shows obvious signs of lameness. Birds with a score of two should be euthanized. Another scoring method used is the pause scoring system. The pause scoring method is a sample of 200 paws on broilers one week from processing age. High ammonia, wet litter, and other housing condition issues can result in paw burns. This method is scored using the Association of Avian Pathologists, AAAP, paw scoring system, or paws as either zero or one. 95% of paws sampled must have a score of zero. Roughly about 190 out of 200 chickens have a score of zero. Passing the audit. Passing the audit and precautions. In this slide, I will be discussing the steps of the audit and the many precautions that follow within each steps. For the first step, make sure to review past audit history and the problem area should be evaluated to ensure that corrective action was effective in preventing another occurrence. The second step is the initial step. This is completed throughout each audit's planning and preparation phase. The audit should be supported throughout this step with any answers. The third step is opening. Ensure that necessary personnel are available. The auditor should be supported with any questions to the group. The fourth step is the audit. Auditors should be supported in requesting that the group in charge of the area review and confirm the findings of the auditor before departing. In this slide, I will be in this slide, I will be continuing from the previous slide, passing the audit and precautions. The fifth step is the exit. This should be the time where the group has an opportunity to ask questions about the aspects of the audit. The sixth step is the follow-up. The lead auditor can make a follow-up based on the findings of the audit. Any issues shown or discussed previously should be improved on before. The next step, I will be discussing the scoring. The audit scores on a scale of one through five, yes, no, or not available. The audit report will provide an explanation for every query and those questions and scores. Operations are rated on a percentage basis. The percentage is used to issue a passing or failing score. A key section to follow closely is the first stage. It is best to ensure that your audit history is reviewed thoroughly and make sure all the problem areas previously have been evaluated. Step five, exit, is also really important. This step can help clarify any questions that you guys may have. This may help clarify in scoring or other aspects. After, after completing our audits, we have suggested improvements for both of the companies we used. For FACTA, we suggest they create subheadings for the audit tools within the section of the program rather than a raised question. It allows for organized guideline for the use the user of the audit. Another suggestion is to have an additional section for welfare issues only. This 
is in order to distinguish a pass or fail before external audits. Suggestions for American Humane is to minimize sections for majority of the facilities. This maintains separate local, state, and federal processing and handling of boilers. To, con to conclude our presentation, we wanted to just mention a few things. Welfare audits are used to ensure the safe and humane treatment of poultry in the houses during transportation and other aspects of their production. Time, effort, and care is used in all animal production units for the animals and the growers and consumers benefit. There are many different moving parts in the production system, all working together with the same goal in mind. We have found that it's understanding and learning about animal production is highly important. Big production companies have had a bad rap while everyone is striving for the same goal of keeping the animals safe and treated humanely. Um, we wanted to thank you for listening to our presentation and have a great day.